Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. Come, Christians, follow where our captain trod, our King victorious, Christ the Son of God. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. Led on their way by this triumphant sign, the hosts of God in conquering ranks combine. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Today we come to you from the, the Epiphany School Chapel. This is the Adoration Chapel for the school, a small and cozier place, and today we'll join together in prayer right here. Brothers and sisters, we acknowledge our sins and ask God's pardon and peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in the same charity of which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice, to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. With the Lord, Lord there, there is, is mercy, mercy and fullness of redemption. redemption. I trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption. He will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If 
the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through the, his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips with the wonderful flame of Holy Gospel in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been dead in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what had begun, done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Only Jesus can make this claim because Jesus is God. Jesus brings good out of evil, life out of death, joy out of suffering because Jesus is God. We're in the midst of evil and death and sorrow right now and many people have lost their hope. Is there even a way out of this? Will we ever get back to normal? 
And how will Jesus bring good out of this? The question I want to leave you with is, what does God want to teach us? We'll come back to this thought. That's the thought I want you to consider today. What does God want to teach us? Our first reading today was from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. It comes to us at the time of the Babylonian captivity. The destruction of Jerusalem had just taken place. Now the Jews were the chosen people. God chose them, brought them out of slavery of Egypt, and he gave them the law. He adopted them as his own people. They were the chosen people. Freed them from slavery, and he gave them the law. He would be their God. They would be his people. And the scripture says he espoused them. He married them. It was a marriage bond between God and his people. But the people violated the covenant. They broke the commands. They violated the marriage bond of the Lord. They were called an adulterous people. The scripture says, early and often did the Lord send prophets to call them back, but they refused. And finally, God allowed their enemies, the Babylonians, to overwhelm them, to destroy them, to carry them off into Babylon. They had no priest, no altar, no temple for sacrifice. And it's in this place, after some period of repentance, that God speaks to Israel the words of our first reading. That's what this was all about. And so God promises a redemption. He promises a resurrection. We find God speaking to Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones come back to life? Lord God, I answered, you alone know that. And then he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. With these words, he's speaking about the resurrection of Israel. He said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They are saying our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, and we are cut off. Therefore, therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I'm going to open your graves. I will make you come out of your graves, my people, and bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and make you come up out of them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may come to life, and I will settle you on your land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. When the people finally repented after long years, God heard their prayer and brought them back to the promised land. That was the resurrection of the people. That was the first understanding of the resurrection. But the Jewish understanding was deeper than that. They knew that God wanted this to be not only communal, but personal. The Pharisees believed also in the resurrection of the body. They had read the various books of the scriptures. They knew the book of wisdom that says the souls of the just are in the hand of God. They also knew the book of Job. And there Job proclaims, I know that my vindicator lives, and on the last day I shall see him, my own eyes, and not another's. The resurrection of the body is proclaimed. And in Jesus, the resurrection becomes clear on a personal level. In today's gospel, he brings Lazarus back to life again. Strictly speaking, Lazarus was resuscitated rather than risen. He would still have to die one day again. And yet, Jesus says, your brother will rise. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Not only does he possess power over life and death, but he himself is the resurrection. He says, do you believe this? And she says, yes, Lord, I've come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God. He was to come into the world. And Jesus says, take away the stone and orders Lazarus come forth. And the dead man rises from the dead and, and comes out of the tomb. Now, the resurrection is for us, too. Not only does Jesus rise from the dead, but all those baptized into him, those who have shared in his life, those who have received the body of Christ. With this, he promises a resurrection of the body. St. Paul goes on and says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, If Christ is raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then empty too is our preaching and empty your faith. Everything hinges on the resurrection. This is the promise of God. This is the gift that he gives to those who love him. Now, this resurrection is necessary because Jesus Christ must triumph over sin and over death. He conquers over all evils. And again, St. Paul reminds us, he must reign until he's put all his enemies beneath his feet. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Now, coming back to our own situation, a situation where we now see evil, and death and sorrow. And some are tempted to think that God has abandoned us. More likely we've abandoned him. More likely we've strayed away from him. But again, our first shot, thought should be, what is God saying to me? What do I learn from this? Where do we go from here? That thought should include deep repentance. It should include a radical reordering of my life. 
It might mean I'm going the wrong direction on so many levels I haven't even considered. So pray. What is God saying to me? That's what we have to ask. Let's look at the good that might come out of this. Important things, life-giving things are thrust upon us. There's nowhere to go to eat. Families are actually eating at home. Families are eating together. That's amazing, powerful. Nothing we could have done would have brought that about. But families eating together, a common meal, shared together in holiness is a beautiful thing. Fathers listening to their sons and daughters. All of this is a wonderful thing where families are united together at the family table. We couldn't have done this by any other means. And here God has brought this about. There's nowhere to go. Families are going for walks. There's no sports. Kids have to learn how to play. They can watch the birds in the spring, and they can see them building their nests. They can watch the ice go out on the lakes. Kids might learn how to take a great big box from a washing machine and make a fort or a dollhouse. Imagine the creativity that will emerge. What about our faith? Even at home, I'd like you to dress up for Mass. Light two candles, place them on either side of the television set. Teach your kids the Bible stories. Wonderful, marvelous stories. And when they not only hear the story, they hear mom and dad reading it to them, teaching them. All of a sudden, the faith becomes real, and it's handed on by those they know and love. It's far too long we've made the mistake of thinking it's the church's job to teach our kids. Family faith is the key. That's something which is critical, something very important. I invite you to look up a website, catholickids101.com. This is a place where you're going to find wonderful Bible stories, stories of kids telling kids about God, but also wonderful stories that you probably have, have not seen or heard before. CatholicKids101.com. I think you'll find it very helpful. Just as God was able to raise those dry bones of Israel and rebuild the land so that he can raise the church up again and the nation, he can rebuild us and our families. First, we have to purify our hearts. We have to purify our homes, purify our church, and purify the nation. It's going to take faith and repentance. Jesus never promised it was going to be easy. He never promised we wouldn't have to suffer. In fact, he says we must take up our cross and follow him. But he promises eternal blessings none, no matter what we do. You and I are on the right track, and he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Please rise for our profession of faith. Together we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Formed by God's holy word, we turn to him now in faithful prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop Hebda, bishops and priests all over the world, that they soon may be able to be celebrating Mass with everyone again, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those who have taken sick from the coronavirus, we ask that they be sent healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the medical personnel and those who are looking so desperately for a vaccine to cure this virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of the police departments and firefighters who are protecting our safety in this, uh, in this emergency. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of those who have died, especially our loved ones, that they may have mercy upon their soul and be granted eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And pause now and add your own intentions in your hearts. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Father in heaven, look down upon us with kindness. Hear our prayers and grant our requests, which we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. we prepare the altar for sacrifice. We invite your generosity to continue to our parish in order to build it up and provide for our needs. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend. And as eternal God, he raised him up from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and with the assistant Bishop, and all those who are holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all who are gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to the eternal God living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace. Command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, 
he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Papadua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the blood of Christ. Amen. A prayer for making a spiritual communion. At thy feet, O my Jesus, I prostrate myself, and I offer thee the repentance of my contrite heart, which is humbled in its nothingness and in thy holy presence. I adore thee in the sacrament of thy love, the ineffable Eucharist. I desire to receive thee into the poor dwelling that my heart offers thee. While waiting for the happiness of sacramental communion, I wish to possess thee in spirit, Come to me, O my Jesus, since I, for my part, am coming to thee. The love embrace my whole being in life and in death. I believe in thee, I hope in thee, I love thee. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As you may have noticed throughout the last week, we've been allowing people to pick up food from our kitchens, and they come through a car line. We hope to use a car line very similar to that next week in order to give Holy Communion. We'll be giving more information as the week progresses. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And our closing hymn is number 211, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. I know that my Redeemer lives, what joy the blessed assurance gives. He lives, he lives, who once was dead. He lives, my everlasting head. He lives triumphant from the grave. He lives eternally to save. He lives exalted throne above. He lives to rule his church in love.